Okay, well, maybe the last section of the interview here, I'd like to pivot and just, can you, first of all, just explain how does Exodus make money and then talk about, you know, your interesting tokenization example. It was just very pioneering. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the way that we make most of our revenue is from the, the swaps of, of crypto assets. So as I mentioned earlier, if, if a person, they, they have Exodus and, and they have Bitcoin and they, think, and they hear all of a sudden about Ethereum, like, oh, this Ethereum thing here is really cool and, and I can hear, earn some yield on Ethereum in, in a self-custodial way, then I want to do that. And so a, a person, what a person can do is to just swap the Bitcoin, swap part of their Bitcoin for some Ethereum, and then they can hold both a- assets simultaneously inside their Exodus wallet. And in the process of that swap, we work with as an affiliate and behind the scenes, we, we get paid a, a percentage of that swap. Okay, so that's the, the one main component of your business model. And so then now, how did you raise equity for Exodus? And you did it in a very novel way. Yeah, so this is really cool that a lot of people just aren't familiar with. So this was the summer of 2020. We started thinking about like, what if we built a platform where we and ultimately others could raise raise money directly inside the, the platform and do it in an SCC qualified way? In other words, have a kind of a crypto public offering. And so we this is what we started with. We're like, well, okay, we should be the first to try this out and, and dog food this and, and pioneer this. And, and kind of learn about the process and then ultimately build the playbook on this process. So that's exactly what we did. So in September of 2020, we filed with the SEC that this is what we wanted to do. And so what this means is, is that we told the SEC that we want investors to come along and download Exodus on their desktop computer with Mac OS or Windows or on their Android or iPhone and then be able to buy Exodus ec- equity in a public offering. And not only that, but do it with only cryptocurrency. So we were the first company in the United States to be able to offer our equity to the uh, common stock to the retail investor for Bitcoin, Ethereum, or USDC, the stable coin. And mm-hmm. so that, that went live in April of, of 2021. And we did this through what's called the Regulation A offering. And, mm-hmm. and so now our, our stock is the only stock in the United States that is the, common, the only common stock in the United States that's tokenized on a, a blockchain. And so today that trades on T0 and we have plans to make that simultaneously be available on the uh, public big boards like the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. Okay, so is there, there's actually a coin that's as associated with your equity? Yes. So you, you can literally go to, uh, you can literally go to Yahoo Finance and, and the uh, ticker is EXOD. And so, like I said, it, today it trades on T0 and security, mm-hmm. securitized markets. And so, so yeah, that's, it's, and it's literally tokenized on a blockchain. So a person can then treat equity as if it were a cryptocurrency, sort of in, in the self custodial model. So, Let's say that um, you're like, yeah, I want some ex- Exodus equity or whatever. Then you, you can sign up to this system and then you would have a, a, a crypto address and then a person can easily, you can just send equity as simple as if it were cryptocurrency between crypto addresses. So it, it's right. very mm-hmm. novel in that approach. But, but in, correct me if I'm mistaking, but I guess a, a key and important difference is something like Bitcoin. I have argued technically that's, fiat in the in the sense that you know it's not a commodity per se and it's certainly not in terms of the, the old school framing and I, th- I said probably economists need to come up with new nomenclature just because it's it seems we you know it's, it's confusing but when i say it's fiat meaning like you can't eat bitcoins you can't build something but you know it, it just is what it is and it's not backed up by anything you like you can't turn them in to get something else and so that's the sense but here like you that isn't a claim on, an, on the underlying equity and exodus so the, that's it's not, exactly right yes mm-hmm. it is it is a so so if you have in your exit and you can hold the shares in your exodus wallet so if you have the shares in your exodus wallet the tokens 
then you have for every one, you have one share of uh, Exodus. It's one common stock, mm. one share of common stock for every one, one token. So that's absolutely correct. Yeah, I, I probably misspoke or I, I think I called it a coin. I should have called it a token. That's probably a, a safer... Oh, it, it is by token coin or that, that's fine. But yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's tokenized equity is what it is. Okay, great. So that trades in a secondary market now and that's how you get a market price. And so somebody could do like figure out what's the capitalized value of, of Exodus at any moment. That's, out, by... that's absolutely right. So, there were, so, right, so we have to, because of this, we file reports with the SEC on Edgar, just like any other public company. We file we file reports through the Regulation A requirements, and and so so yeah, any person can can look and see what our stock price is, and you can look at what the market capitalization is. Now, unfortunately, because these markets are so new, what it mm-hmm. implies right now is that our market cap, right now, this is this is wild. Our market cap is at any given day. Let, it's anywhere from you know sixty to to eighty million dollars or so in total market cap, and sometimes it goes over hundred or so. But that's total market cap value. Given mm-hmm. the cash that we have on our balance sheet is over one hundred million dollars, that implies that we have a you know a negative enterprise value for a company that is going to be profitable this year and mm-hmm. and drive a little under a little under fifty million in revenue this year. So yeah, like I said, it's a very new marketplace. But that that's okay. We wanted to be pioneers in, in this space. Okay, that's okay. Thank that's interesting, and I think the listeners can appreciate that you volunteered that because <laughs> it's an interesting. Well, fact. It's all public, anyways. Yeah. It's all like the no. person could go dig it up on the Edgar. Or right, 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 right. So well, now. yeah, I'm just as an economist, I'm trying to think. I guess that's because this is just so new that investors are very hesitant to to get in, and you just think over time as they understand how this works, then. Yeah, I I would actually attribute it to that. There's a, there's still a lot of friction in these marketplaces. Mm-hmm. So so the the stock itself, we cannot uh, legally allow for it to be traded inside of Exodus or swapped inside of Exodus. So it has to tr- trade on these other marketplaces. Now we can ultimately try to build interfaces to make it a little more seamless. But these mm-hmm. marketplaces, I think, have a lot of friction in terms of making it easy for consumers and investors to go in and actually buy and and sell and trade these assets. So over time, what we will do is we will make it all one seamless experience so that you can do these trades and and make Mm. it easy, but it's just, it's going to take time. Can they get dividends on that or or is it not? We don't, we ultimately, yes, we can. We have Mm. that ability. In other words, Mm -hmm. so if you hold like the Exodus shares in your Exodus wallet, we have that ability to pay dividends with stable coins, which is really cool. So you can right. imagine, let, let's say, let's say that we did, you know, after earnings, when we have earnings, let's say that we want to declare that we're going to pay a dividend. Most companies pay quarterly dividends. We could say, you know what, we're actually going to pay dividends daily, right? That's what this mm-hmm. technology enables. And then you just mm-hmm. get it. You have your excess wallet, you open it up, you're like, oh, cool. I got paid my dividends today. I mean, you can actually have your dividends paid every few seconds if you wanted. Like that's what the technology mm-hmm. ultimately enables, but we don't use that yet. And but at some point in time, that's something that we will certainly experiment with. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, last question for you, JP, and we really appreciate your time. Um, you can frame this however you want, but I'm curious. Just your say, oh, oh, the form. I'd like your thoughts on say, like five years from now. This is what I'm sure. The financial system, the an aspect of it that I think a lot of people aren't fully taking into account yet. Like this is what's coming. You know, we're getting ready for it. We see it, and yet I think even a lot of smart people who have their finger on the pulse of the system, this is not going to be on. They're going to be caught off guard by this. Is there anything that's coming to mind if I give you that kind of prompt? Yeah, I I would say that the biggest aspect is that Bitcoin itself will take on a lot more institutional interest. And so what that ultimately implies is that institutions and more retirement funds, big funds are going to be buying more Bitcoin to, to back their funds. And so like BlackRock, they filed for a Bitcoin ETF. And, and for a lot, of, a lot of people might know and understand already that BlackRock is one of the biggest asset managers in the world. So when the US government has issues or troubles with any kind of financial aspect, they go to BlackRock. And so for BlackRock to file for a Bitcoin ETF, 
is, I mean, they're going to get it approved because BlackRock, when they file an ETF of all that, I think they file, I don't know how many hundreds of ETFs they filed, but of the hundreds of ETFs that they filed with the SEC, only two have ever gotten rejected. So I see a world where a number of institutions are going to continue to come in and be buying Bitcoin, buying crypto. And so I think for mainstream consumers, it's, it's important to take notice of the, this now. I think another really exciting trend that is it's early on is that a lot of people may know this or may not, but El Salvador, you know, about a year and a half, two years ago, they made Bitcoin legal tender. Now, mm -hmm. I personally, I went down there in May to experience it myself, and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of making it easy to use. But this is just the beginning. They just announced that they turned on Bitcoin mining on their volcanoes. So mm -hmm. this, these kinds of trends, I think, are going to continue. You see uh, what's happening with inflation in Argentina and in some of the local politics that are happening there and some of the, the presidential candidates that are very pro-cryptocurrency, pro Austrian economics. And, and I think that cryptocurrency in Bitcoin is going to continue to take the world by storm. And I think it's just important for people to really notice that. And I think it will become more of a means of commerce at, at some point in time in the future. Hey, everybody, this is Bob Murphy. Thanks for listening to this clip from the Infi podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, please consider subscribing and share this video with others. We've got new episodes dropping every Friday with more insightful discussions. Stay tuned.